to another tune of the month and happy May! This month I have for you an old time reel. This is a tune that I encountered recently on tour. We were playing a bunch of nights in a row and one of our nights included a combination concert and dance. Super fun. So yeah, we found ourselves playing for a bunch of dancers and uh, we suddenly found ourselves needing to play some old time tunes to match the dance. And uh, I suddenly found myself uh, incredibly sick of every old time tune that I usually play. Uh, it happens. <laughs> so don't worry, I had a solution. My solution was to turn to my wonderful guitarist, Owen Morrison, and say, what do you got? And he played this. It's an old time classic called The Yellow Barber. And I fell in love with this tune instantly because, well, it's a very simple melody that you can learn in about five minutes, say, mm, on stage. <clears throat> um, it's also one of those tunes that is really made wonderfully rich by tiny little changes, tiny little variations in the bowing, in the rhythm, in the double stop choices. And you can make it sound like it's just got hundreds of variations that never repeat themselves. Check it out. instrument, you're ready to play, you know how it works. Okay, so the Yellow Barber, in case you hadn't already figured it out, is in D, key of D major, two sharps, and let's just start by looking at the kind of classic melody of the tune, getting that under our respective fingers, uh, picks, chops, if you're a flute player, I don't know why you'd be learning an old time tune as a flute player, but that's kind of cool, if you're out there. All right, so here we go, I'll play the A section. And I'm going to keep this actually rather straight. Um, I'll play through a little bit slowly. Ready? Two, three, and... <laughs> times and play along with that, you can pick it up really quickly. But just for the fun of it, let's break it down a little more so we get an idea of the elements that we're working with here, because that's what's going to help us make a lot of variation. As I play through this, we're going to discuss mainly two things, one of which is the um, double stops, right? where are our double stop choices, and also some bow ornaments. I don't know if I'd call them ornaments, they're pretty structural, not decorative. But the big one that I'm using is what I call the old time scoop. Um, it's also called a rocking bow. That's this thing. Right? And how I'm doing that, just so you catch it for later, I'm playing a double stop. In this case, I have an A chord, right? My first finger is glued across both strings if you're a fiddler. I play them together. Now I'm going to release the top voice, play just the bottom, and then scoop my 
my bow back across to catch them both in the same bow. So it goes down, ah. Uh, now to make it hip, notice I'm giving a little burst of speed when I come back to the double stop. Not a real accent. If I accent it, it's too, too aggressive like this. Right, that's not, old time was way laid back. We don't do aggression. Um, that's for bluegrass. <clears throat> Uh, just kidding, bluegrassers, I love you. Just a little leaning into that string. So I'll, I'll call that a scoop or a swoop or a rocking bow. You'll know what I mean. It doesn't really have an official name, just kind of recognizing that sound. All right, so here we go. Beginning in the A section, I'm starting with a D major chord. That's part one. Do it again. keep it straight but you hear already I'm getting some double stopping going I can't help myself it's so like essentially old time here's what I'm doing here when I get up there I am doubling my open string D with my fourth finger D we call that a unison drone drone means that we're keeping two strings going simultaneously and this is a unison because that's the interval open D and fourth finger D are the same note a unison so, here I go again, part one. Unison. Now, back to the unison, and I'm going to keep my fourth finger right there. If I keep my fourth finger down the whole time, I can drone it while I play the top melody, which just goes like this. Up and down the scale. But if I add that fourth finger drone, cooler and more old-timey Americana sounding. All right, so let's put this part one together. Unison drone. Keep your fourth finger. Got it? One more time. Now part two is based on that same A chord we just demonstrated the swoop with, and that's what we're going to start with. I call that pattern where you go down the scale and then skip back up to exactly where you started. It's a combination. I call it a Frere Jaca. Actually, that's backwards Frere Jaca. Real Frere Jaca goes like this. Frere Jaca. Right, we all know that song. Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca. It means go up the scale and skip back to where you started. You can also do that backwards. I guess that would make it a Jaca Frera. Down the scale, skip right back to where you are. That pattern happens all over this tune. So if you start hearing it now, it'll make your life a lot easier. All right, so let's do this part two. It's an A chord with a scoop. repeat the beginning. This tune's very cool because it doesn't quite repeat itself. It does a variation of a D chord. It goes like this. Try it again. Start to get some action in there with those moving notes, all right? So it starts with the syncopation. Now right here, this is a kind of, if you look at it on the staff, it looks like a combination of skips and scales, and it's like, how do I remember this? Well, here's a nice little trick. We've talked about this in old time tunes of Tune of the Months Past. I call it a scale with a hole in it. 
I'm just going to go up and uh, down and then up the scale, but I'm not going to use my second finger. That's just... But I don't play that second finger. So you can pretend like your second and third finger are glued together into one fat finger and are unable to be used independently, and you'll get exactly the right thing for this little end of the, um, of the section. Here we go, part one prime again. Scale with a hole in it. One more time. Awesome, and that brings us to the ending, which is actually the simplest part thus far. It's just some broken thirds. of that little one prime part, you want to play that unison drum and then leave that fourth finger down, just like we did at the beginning, right? Same technique works here. It's a nice sneaky way to get an easy double stop that's going to sound very old timey and really stylistic through the whole next part. All right, if you need, by the way, any more repetitions on any part of that A section, just go ahead and rewind the video as many times as you want. Play it over and over. Get really comfy. The more comfortable you get, the more fun it is, and I'm happy to play with you as many repetitions as you want at home. For now, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to go on to the B section. Right? I'll play the whole thing a little bit slower and relatively straight. I'm going to have a couple of drones in there, see if you can pick them up now that you're getting sensitive to listening for them. Just 
repeat that last little bit of the of those two complete B sections over and over. Play with it and learn it without my saying a word. I know you have, know how to do it, tune of the monthers. All right. But if you would like a little more uh, a little more broken down, let's do that right now. Did you hear familiar stuff from the A section? There's a lot of repeated material in this B section. It's called a freebie for us. We like that. All right. So we're gonna start with a D chord. Makes sense. Tunes in D. Did you catch in there? Here's another Jacques Ferro. It's also one of those no second finger situations. All right, now if I want to spiff that up a little bit, I would add some drones. First, I'm playing the note D with my finger, so why not add my open D? And I'm going to leave that third finger down. So it rings through. Do you hear that? Now I'm not ringing it through the whole time. That would be too heavy. Listen to this. If I just play both strings at once the whole time, it just gets um, to me a little too scrubby, not quite classy enough for old time. So what I'm doing is playing double stop and then backing it off. And then double stop. Do you hear that? Where I'm leaning my bow into both strings and then backing away from that extra drum, going just to the melody note and then leaning in a little bit. It's really a nice effect. Listen. I'll do it again. Right? Alright, let's do that part one one more time of the B section. It starts right away with this unison drone. Swoop. There's another one of those Jacques Frères at the top. Down the scale. How easy is that? You already know all these elements. Unison drone with a swoop. And now, of course, if I really wanted to, I could just leave that fourth finger down and continue the drone, couldn't I? And if I did that, I want to make sure that I emphasize the return to the D there at the end with my D string. Do it again. Excellent. Now, we're to the best part of the whole tune because it's the repeated material. Right now, we would expect to go back to part one. Extend, we have an extended ending. In this case, just a double ending. Check it out. It starts with those broken thirds. Little turn around. And ending. The same ending from the A section, right? How's that for an awesome freebie? So check it out, I call this the double ending. It goes like this, broken thirds. To turn around, I'm gonna do that scale with a hole in it. And then broken thirds again. Notice I've still got my drone going on at the end there. Let's do it one more time, double ending. Starts with a D chord. Unison. Swoop. Double ending. Yeah.
in its basic, totally recognizable form. All right, go you. Go ahead and rewind, get those sections feeling really good. And once you feel like you've got a handle on the tune, uh, let's now play around with some ideas of how we could change up the rhythm just a tiny bit, change up the double stops just a tiny bit to get some variation going. All right, so my favorite idea to play with with this old time tune, and indeed a lot of old time tunes, is getting a little bit of rhythmic anticipation going. Now, what do I mean by that? I'll show you. Let's go to the beginning of the A section. Here's what the version that we know right now. Well, I could just as easily do this. Ah, do you hear it's a tiny bit different? I'll do it again. I would play the pickups here. Right? But instead, I'm going to forget those pickups and just go straight for the high note. In this case, my second finger F sharp. And I'm throwing a little swoop in there at the end. Did you see it? Now, when I go for that high note, I'm actually going a little bit early. I'm anticipating it. Anticipate it would sound like this. That's what I would call the boring version. I'll do it again, boring. Now I'll anticipate. Just a little, yeah, I'm even putting a little slide in there. the old time feel. All right, so that's a great way to variate slightly, subtly, but very significantly that first part. If we were to take that same idea, we could do it over the A chord. The idea is let's get rid of the pickups, go straight for the high note of that part, and anticipate it. Here's how it would work. swoop in there at the end. Why not? I'll do it again. Try again with the anticipation. Swoop. Anticipate. And a little swoop at the end. That's uh, another theme of this variation that we're doing. It's a little swoop at the end, right? Okay. Could the same thing work for the next part? The one prime? Well, I don't see why not. because it goes into that more action, the notier ending. Now, you may notice that in that noty ending, I didn't do any variation. I played it pretty much, pretty much straight, like we learned it in the basic melody. My reasoning for that is in the older, old-timey uh, style of playing, those notes would be considered how the tune goes and respected like that. They would be kept pretty much the same every time. So the audience has something that they listen to and that they hear over and over and recognize. Now, could you mess around with those notes and do something different? Any of those totally work. However, to me personally, that's getting a little more into the bluegrass, Texas contest style um, way of thinking about a tune, where they use the endings to add a lot of variation. In the more contra dance style, old time, uh, it tends to be a simpler kind of variation and subtler like we were doing at the beginning of the tune. And the ending, where there's more action, is kind of left to do its own thing. 
Play around with both, because it's fun to toe the line on that style. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep that ending straight. Old time. Old time. Okay, so let's put this whole uh, variation set of the A section together. The theme of this variation is anticipate the high note and swoop at the end. Try it. D chord. If you want to see exactly what those were, you're going to have to rewind the video and figure them out because I don't totally know myself. I just kind of found my way from the anticipation to where I knew I had to be for the next section. That's why it's really useful to be comfortable with the base of the tune so you have room to kind of move around like that. All right, well, let's take the same idea and see if what kind of mischief we can get up to in the B section, um, this idea of anticipation. Originally, the B section was this, right? Well, let's try the same thing. Does it work? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I can even add that soup at then. That's cool. Notice when I'm anticipating. I'm keeping this third finger down so it can drone. Gets me an extra double stop. Try it again. Keep your third finger down. Same thing with the next one. Yeah, that's very effective. Again, I'm going to respect the tune. And keep it totally classic and clean. If you wanted to do something subtle, you could. I'll just improvise one for the fun of it. broken thirds, I, de I decided I wanted to go up, All right? That's just a D major arpeggio. And then I have to get down the scale at the end because that's the fastest way to get back to the D, sec uh, the, the D chord at the end. All right, so if that interests you, just play that back a couple of times and learn it. It doesn't totally interest me, but... The idea is out there in the universe. Okay, so let's uh, play through the whole tune. And I'm going to mix up the basic tune and the anticipation ideas. That's mostly what I'm going to work with. Now, you may hear I also get a couple little differences. Uh, I'm going to have a couple places where I'm going to try to get up high, like that. And I may play some different um, descents from the anticipations. That's okay. I'm playing around at this point here at the end of the video. We've officially finished our learning of the tune. And what I'm trying to show you is kind of how you could start messing around with the tune and finding your own variations. You can play with me. You can also listen. Um, it's a jam session either way. Here we go.
anticipated rhythm um, is really effective. And then at the very end there, I finally started changing up some notes, but I didn't really do much of that until the last minute. So hopefully that gives you a lot of ideas to play with. It's a great tune that's an excuse to work on this. Hey, how would I play around with this tune? So, you know, do it with Yellow Barber. And then, of course, go find your other old time tunes that you like to play and mess around with them the same way. How could you throw in anticipations? How could you add more drums? The whole point is to start exploring different ideas that will make all your tunes more interesting and then you won't end up bored with tunes. Well, you might still. I still do, but it will happen less often. <laughs> All right, well, there's some crazy ideas for you. I hope that gets you through your May. As always, if you would like to see sheet music for this tune, um, well, I mean, my sheet music that I write for this is kind of an outline. It's not going to be every variation, but if it's helpful for you, um, make sure you're on my uh, mailing list, my email newsletter. Go to www.mariblack.com. Click on newsletter and hit subscribe. I send out tune of the month uh, sheet music uh, each month as a part of my email newsletter. So if you're on that list, you'll be getting this tune and all the tunes to come after. If you are not yet on the list and you're finding this video some years from now, hello future people, um, you missed that newsletter. But the good news is you can find tunes um, like Yellow Barber and pretty much every other tune I do on tune of the month on many of the wonderful online sheet music resources that are floating around the web. My personal favorites are JC's ABC Tune Finder. All you have to do is ask Google for JC, the letters, ABC, more letters, Tune Finder, and it will take you right there. I also love thesession.org, which is a great repository for a lot of Celtic tunes. I'm not sure Yellow Barber will be on there, but I know JC has it. So check those out. Find more tunes, go play around. I've talked too much. See you next month. Bye.